So I wanted to make this video because I think there are a couple of very exciting changes happening to the Trading212 app. If you've watched any videos on this channel before, you know that Trading212 is one of my most recommended brokers and it seems like it keeps getting better and very much listens to the community. So the first announcement is that the cashback is back for Trading212 ISAs. So if you open a new ISA on Trading212 from the tax years 2024 to 2025, you will receive 1% cashback on deposits to your ISAs so if you max out your contributions at £20,000, for example, you will receive a bonus £200, which is absolutely free, and I can't complain about that at all. However, one thing to note, and something that prevented me from getting my £200 bonus last year, was the fact that I, for whatever reason, I don't know, opened up my ISA before the tax year began. If you don't have any ISAs with Trading212 or any other platform, you can actually open up an ISA before the tax year starts. I did that last year for some reason, and because it wasn't classed as a new ISA, I did not receive that 200 pounds. So please, if you're thinking about creating a new ISA, just wait until the next tax year opens. So the main part of this video is actually the fact Trading212 have introduced a whole new section to some of their ETFs, making them even more attractive compared to their competitors, who some have had these features for a while now. So when you open the app, you are greeted with this screen that you always see in my portfolio updates. I would still like to see a dedicated section where we can actually browse some of these ETFs. However, for the time being, we're going to have to click the magnifying glass here. And what this shows is the top stocks. And it kind of makes sense for Trading212 being very focused more on individual stocks, but you can of course see the most owned stocks, most traded and things like that. If however we scroll down a little bit, we can see a section that says most popular ETFs. I would like to see the ETFs and individual stocks kind of separated so that beginner investors know the risks between individual stocks and something a bit more diversified such as an ETF. Now when we go into the most popular ETFs, as you can see the good old VUSA is here, the Vanguard S&P 500. When we click onto it, so here is the VUSA and as normal we see the graph that shows us the change in movement in price of the VUSA and we can change the time scale here one year three months etc etc the price at the top everything like we've come to know it when we scroll down you can see that everything looks the same nothing has actually changed so as you can see there is very basic info on this Vanguard fund however if we go back and if we click onto any iShares ETF here for example is the iShares global clean energy fund we can see the price movement as usual however if we scroll down we can see a whole new section that explains more about this ETF and something that I'm really happy to see on Trading212. I've made a comment before my portfolio update saying that the ETF information is very lackluster on Trading212 and there is a lot of data missing at a glance that we can see for these funds that will help us make a decision to whether we want to invest in that fund or not. Here for example now we see more about the fund we can see that the fund seeks to track the S&P Global Clean Energy Index tells you more about the index so here finally we get some additional information so for example the expense ratio which is the total cost for the fund per year. We also get the figures for assets under management. For example, for this fund, it's over three billion pounds. We also get the price to earnings ratio here. How often the dividends are paid out. So this one is twice a year, so semi-annually. We also get the dividend yield finally, this fund in particular 0.82% as an annual rate. Of course, the dividend yield always changes with the share price, so it's not something that you can be so fixated on. We also see the one, three, five and 10 year annual returns quickly visualized as a percentage. So of course, as an example, this fund has not been doing the greatest past year down around 32 percent however over the past 10 years up by 4.7 percent but as we know most indices have performed a lot better than that in the past 10 years so knowing these key information points it allows us as investors to actually look at etfs quickly and decide whether or not we want to actually invest in them although this isn't financial advice please try to do more research before you actually put a lot of your money into these funds. The next part we see is that we have a new section called asset allocation and it shows you how this index actually invests in terms of its individual holdings. You can see that by weight percent, first solar is 8.41%. We can even go into that now and actually buy it individually if we want to override the ETF's weightings. However, please note that's not gonna actually change the ETF. The ETF is managed by iShares, which is owned by BlackRock. We can see also this ETF has Enphase Energy 7.28%. We can also see sectors finally, something I loved seeing from InvestEngine. We can see that it is 43% mostly in utilities. It won't actually let us 
us go into that to break it down further, but we can see 43% in utilities, 26% in industrials, technology, so on and so forth. We can also finally see the regions. So this fund has only 38% allocation towards the United States of America and a huge 13% in China, Denmark, Brazil, Portugal, India, Canada, and the list goes on. You can actually check this for yourself. Now, why I really like this is because I do actually invest quite heavily into iShares funds. For example, my favorite here, the GSPX. So this is the S&P 500 by iShares and it's a hedged version, meaning the currency differences between the pound and the dollar are less impactful towards your overall return. For example, over the past year, the hedged version has given a return of 19%. When we compare that to the Vanguard version, we can see over the past year, it's given us 17% and it could have been a lot worse due to some of the currency fluctuations we've been seeing between the pound and the dollar. In any case, if we go back into the GSPX, we can see that there is again, more information about the GSPX. We have the expense ratio, as you can see, easily comparable to the Vanguard one. It actually is 30% more expensive, for example. We can see the assets under management, 70 billion pounds. We can see the price to earnings ratio, also the dividend yield, which is 1.16%. We can also quickly at a glance see the average annual returns. So over the past year, 11%, five year, 10.25%. And I'm not too sure if that's completely, completely accurate. I guess for some ETFs, the data only really goes back to a certain amount. So for example, for this fund, there actually isn't five years worth of data, but again, we can see the top holdings. For example, this is like a generic S&P 500 fund. We can see that 7.22% is in Apple, 6.94% in Microsoft. Of course, recently Microsoft has become a $3 trillion company. So the weight within the S&P 500 actually increases. And as the S&P 500 is market cap sorted, that increases as the market cap increases of its individual holdings. But also you can see by sector how the S&P 500 from iShares is actually managed. 28% technology, which is very, very technology heavy financials 13% healthcare 12% so on and so forth and again here we see that the S&P 500 being the top 500 ish companies within the US of course 99.7% based in the United States of America which is extremely heavy towards one country so now that we have more information like this we can quickly see at a glance how these ETFs actually are exposed to certain sectors to certain regions so if we think that we are too exposed to the United States of America for this fund for example we can actually try maybe to invest in another fund or mix and match our ETFs. So make sure to check out some of my other videos and I will see you in the next video.